Hey guys, Richard here. You're watching The Plain Bagel. I wanted to make a quick video about Chinese stocks and the recent updates we've been hearing around China. Because as you may have heard in the news, the Chinese Communist Party have been introducing uh, new fines and regulations that are having a pretty dramatic impact on a number of tech stocks. A number of leading Chinese companies have lost a sizable chunk of their market valuation over a pretty short period of time. Alibaba is down roughly 30% year to date. Tencent is down just under 20%. And Baidu is a stock that's down 40% since the beginning of 2021. Now, if you don't invest in China or you're not too involved with your stock picks directly, these names might not mean a whole lot to you, but they're actually some of the biggest companies in the world. As you may know, China itself is seen as a very economically attractive country to invest in, uh, you know, policies aside. It's a country that in many ways is still developing and with such a large population, a lot of people view the area as having a lot of firepower as it develops. And we've seen that, you know, its gross domestic product has increased at quite mm -hmm. a high, you know, click over the past few decades. And for the companies that we've mentioned, these are actually some of the largest companies in the world. As an example, Alibaba, which even though it operates a number of different activities, is sort of seen as like the Chinese Amazon. It actually sees twice the e-commerce activity as mm -hmm. Amazon. Didi, which is the country's version of Uber, has more users than America has people. And Tencent, which is one of the largest video game companies in the world, also operates a messaging app, WeChat, which has 1.2 billion users, roughly a seventh of the world population. So as you can see, these are some pretty big and important companies. And you know, with such a positive economic backdrop in terms of the development of the population, and you know, historical growth rates that are pretty astronomical for a lot of these companies, a lot of investors are pretty excited that some of these stocks are now discounted, if you will. But in my typical party pooper fashion, I wanted to make this video to highlight the risks. And it's truly not to discourage people from exploring the area, but the Chinese stock market is really its own beast. And there are a few things that you need to be aware of before you, you know, explore investing in some of these companies. It's not to say that there might not be opportunity here. I truly am not providing a buy or sell recommendation, but it is just to say that, you know, compared to the American or even the Canadian stock market, there are a few factors that are worth highlighting and worth knowing going into it. And I will provide some of my own thoughts towards the end and how you can manage through this sort of risk. Uh, but for the most part, this is just to give you an update on the information you should be aware of. So without further ado, let's just jump into it. As we mentioned over the past few years, but especially over the past few months, the Chinese government has been cracking down on a number of its industries. Uh, some of these crackdowns have been company specific and some have been more broad based. Recently, we saw Alibaba slapped with a $2.75 billion antitrust suit. This not long after the company had already been forced to restructure one of its affiliate companies, Ant Group Financial, after the government had essentially nixed that company's IPO which oddly enough came shortly after Jack Ma spoke poorly about regulators. So uh, that's cool. <laughs> DD, the ride hailing company, was recently forced off of app stores, supposedly because it IPO'd on a US stock exchange and because it was going to be providing sensitive data to US regulators, uh, something the Chinese government wasn't a fan of. And just last week, China released a new data privacy law that by many standards is viewed as one of the strictest sets of data privacy laws in the world. Uh, and as we all know from companies like Facebook and Google, uh, data is a pretty important resource for you know, these for-profit companies. And so this new law could very well impede some of their profit growth. And on top of all this, we're finding out just this morning that China has further regulation plans. We're finding out that China plans to ban future US IPOs of Chinese tech stocks that deal with sensitive data, and that China plans to further regulate the algorithms used by these tech stocks to target consumers with ads and pricing mechanisms. Things like changing the price that a consumer pays based on their preferences and things like that. These are updates we're finding out literally the morning of the day I'm planning to post this video, which is why I'm rushing out this recording. But while we aren't sure what these IPO rules will necessarily mean for companies like Alibaba and Tencent that are already listed in the US, it's clearly negative news for companies that hope to do so. Listing in the US has been a big boon for some of these stocks, so obviously a lot of tech companies will be disappointed. And as for the algorithm rules, well, that's going to be a blanket negative impact on a lot of these tech companies, uh, given that it will reduce the efficiency of their targeting mechanisms and things like that. So yes, um, last minute important updates to the story that I wanted to make sure I tossed in, given how impactful they could be on Chinese stocks. Uh, but yeah, let's get back to the footage I recorded 
before this morning. Obviously, this is enough to make any investor nervous. Uh, but one of the things that really highlights, you know, how risky the situation could be for investors is not actually the updates around the tech space, but actually around the tutoring industry. Because essentially, the Chinese government killed an entire industry, the pre ninth grade private tutoring industry, overnight. Citing education inequality in China, which is a very real issue in the country, uh, the government essentially forced all for-profit companies to operate as not-for-profits in that space. So overnight, you had all these companies forced to change their whole business model, and the investors who you know backed many of these companies lost a fortune as a result. So in many, the tutoring situation highlights how disruptive and brash the Chinese government is willing to be to achieve its policy objectives. So yes, you know, there are concerns around the, you know, regulation they've currently enacted, but really I would argue that the majority of the decline we've seen in Chinese stocks is focused almost entirely on the risk of potential regulation updates in the future. There are fears that larger companies might be forced to divest some of their companies because the country does not like monopolies. Data collection might become more restrictive, and there's even the chance that the government might intervene with things such as user interfaces, with how addictive some of these apps and some of these businesses are because the government has a lot of strong opinions and feelings about some of these businesses. You might have seen the recent headlines about how a Chinese state media outlet called video games a spiritual opium, referencing the government's belief that the country suffers from video game addiction. You may not be aware of this, but Chinese citizens per capita spend 60% more time playing video games than American mm -hmm. citizens. So while that's great for a video game company, uh, such as Tencent, a lot of people saw this as a directed you know, threat against these sorts of companies and a foreshadowing for potential future regulation. So that's the situation in a nutshell and why a lot of these promising tech companies are down by such a large degree. Uh, but it is worth noting that some of these regulatory updates, and, and there's a big emphasis on the sum there, some of this regulation is overdue to some degree. China is still a developing country, so a lot of their regulatory policies are a bit, you know, behind the times. There's been a crackdown on things like fake reviews, which if you've shopped internationally, you've probably experienced that firsthand, as well as things like sales figure inflation. Uh, you know, things that most of us can agree is probably for the benefit of, of you know, investors and the country. And regarding antitrust concerns, that's not unique to China. We're actually currently seeing something similar play out in the US. It's, it's, you know, to a totally different degree than what we're seeing in China, but we are seeing lawsuits against companies like Facebook and Google because of their, their monopoly position in some markets. But make no mistake, even though some of these regulations might benefit consumers and, you know, might be positive for the country, uh, the intention behind these regulations does appear to be to rein in some of these large institutions that in many ways have become very powerful something the Chinese Communist Party does not like. It's sometimes hard to remember, but China is still a communist state. The market activity is state mm -hmm. capitalism, where the government plays a very heavy role and is very involved with all business activity. So with the rise of some of these behemoths and the influence that they've come to exert over the markets and over people, uh, the running narrative from a lot of these media outlets is that the Chinese Communist Party has finally come to recognize just how influential these businesses are. And so they're looking to nip that in the bud and stop these companies from, you know, growing further or to rein them in uh, to prevent anything that might threaten their authority or cause dissonance within the country. And even outside of the regulatory risk that comes with China being a communist state uh, where the government seems to be experimental to some degree, much to the detriment of the market, there have always been certain risk factors with investing in China. Just as an example, Chinese companies do not face the same accounting standards as other international companies. Something we actually recently saw play out with Luck and Coffee, which is the Chinese version of, a, of Starbucks. There's a, there's a Chinese version of everything, but the Chinese version of Starbucks, if you will, uh, recently got in trouble for misleading investors with their accounting statements. You may have also seen people recently highlighting VIEs or variable interest entities, something that demonstrates how foreign investors can't actually own certain Chinese stocks. Now that might sound confusing given the, the topic of this video and the fact that we're talking about investing in Chinese companies. But oddly enough, uh, when you invest in a company like Alibaba, because it operates in what China considers a sensitive industry, you aren't actually buying shares of Alibaba, the Chinese company. You're buying shares of Alibaba Group Holding Limited, a company based in the Cayman Islands, not China. 
And that company has an agreement with the actual, the OG uh, Alibaba in China that allows them to share in the profits of Alibaba. So you don't actually own the Chinese company Alibaba, you own this other company that has an agreement with Alibaba. VIEs are a little confusing and they might warrant their own video, but the brief of it is that they are a structure that allows these companies from China to get around this foreign investor rule. But the risk there is obviously that if China has a law against foreign investors, you know, owning Alibaba, they might eventually go after this mechanism that's a workaround to this law. And on top of all this, we've seen risk from the US side of things, with American regulators threatening to delist Chinese ADRs, or American Depository Receipts, within three years if these Chinese companies don't comply by American accounting or disclosure standards. Uh, now, <laughs> ADRs, again, could warrant their own whole video, uh, but the brief of it is just a foreign version, uh, you know, object, if you will, that represents shares of a foreign company that's somewhere else. So BABA, for example, is an example of a New York Stock Exchange listed ADR for a Chinese company that's actually listed in Hong hmm. Kong. And you can avoid this delisting risk by buying the shares from Hong Kong, uh, but it is still a risk to the stock's market value because if they are delisted, it will still impact the stock's price. While delisting a stock doesn't impact the stock's fundamental operations, what it does is it removes an avenue through which many North American investors are owning this business. So by removing that and you know forcing these investors to sell or you know causing uncertainty in that area, it is still going to drag down the stock's price uh, if there's that delisting. So that's uh, that's a lot to unpack. <laughs> But what, what's the takeaway? What should investors do given all this information? Uh, well, you know, it, it's complicated. There's a lot of things to consider. On the one hand, a lot of these companies seem to have very promising businesses. You know, they've had excellent growth in the past. Financially, they seem to be in great shape. You know, a number of these companies have negligible debt balances and impressive, you know, profit margins over 20%, which is a very, you know, positive factor for these companies. But on the other hand, you know, it's hard to ignore the regulatory and the country risk that comes from operating within China. Personally, you know, I don't know that there's much risk of the country completely handicapping these sorts of businesses. They are still profitable. They still generate jobs for the country. And overall, you know, they still provide their benefits. Uh, but certainly there is risk around how the future growth pans out, if that growth will still be as fast as it has been in the past. It might continue to be as impressive as it has been, but there's certainly that overhang, that risk, that you know there's something that dampens that future growth rate. And yes, with these stocks declining so rapidly, uh, many of them have become attractive compared to historical valuations. But you know, while we do want to buy low and sell high, there's a saying in investments that you don't want to try catching a falling knife. Um, I know. <laughs> There's mixed words of wisdom in the world of finance. I really argue for both sides of it. But aside from giving unclear instructions, what I will say is probably the prudent thing to do is to limit your exposure to Chinese stocks if you decide to invest in the area. Uh, yes, you know, these companies have seen very attractive growth rates historically, and you know, there is a potential to make money. This is a high risk, high potential reward situation, uh, but you also don't want to risk the financial future of your portfolio. Uh, you know, you don't want to have a chunk of your portfolio all invested in Chinese tech stocks when there's the risk that the Chinese government could introduce regulation that has a blanket negative impact on the Chinese positions you own. My primary concern when dealing with portfolios is preserving the financial well-being of the clients at hand. Uh, so yes, you know, while it might be beneficial to have that exposure, you want to ensure that if, you know, things enter a worst case scenario, uh, that you'll be okay, that you'll manage through it, and long term, uh, things will recover. So guys, that's the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments down below what you think of this whole situation. Are you of the mindset that this is a once in a lifetime opportunity to pick up some awesome companies that are trading at a discount and have incredible track records? Or do you view the Chinese government as being too big of a risk factor to put your money into the area? You know, given the fact that they've been able to kill an entire industry essentially overnight. I'd be really curious to hear your thoughts on that. If you enjoyed the video, if you found value in it, make sure to like, subscribe, all that awesome stuff. And as always, when it comes to Chinese stocks and any other type of investment, be safe out there.